Hello, Doc uh, Mukucha. Yes, how are you, Doc? I'm okay. I, I was um, logged out, so I'm not sure. We still have. Yeah, it, it, it happened. It happened to everyone, Doc. Yeah, yeah. The, the network today is a bit um, different. Yes. So I don't know whether I should proceed or wait a little bit. We now have 36 participants logged in. Yeah, I think I think proceed because we are recording. So okay. we will share the the recording on YouTube. So you proceed. Ah, it's fine. So uh ladies and gentlemen, uh we were now on multi-item measurement scales, which I recommended for measuring latent variables, especially those for, for those doing quantitative studies found in uh, social sciences. And the way when we're talking about social sciences, we don't only mean uh, programs like uh, social work, uh, BA arts and so forth. Even commercial subjects, most of them are social sciences as well. Even those like accounting, where they have got numbers, they have got the social aspect in their studies. For example, issues like corporate governance and so forth, they do have latent variables in those areas as well. So I was great, I was giving you an example of uh, a study in one of the top journals which attempted to measure employee satisfaction and the, the measurement scale for employee satisfaction the one which I'm showing on the screen there. If you can see, uh, they did five items to measure employee satisfaction. The first item is said, we are satisfied with the salary of this company. The second item, we are satisfied with the promotion opportunity of this company. Third item, we are satisfied with the job nature of this company. The fourth item was satisfied with the relationship of my fellow workers in this company. And the last one, which is the fifth item is, we are satisfied with the supervision of my supervisor to this company. So we find that these five items makes up the measurement scale for employee satisfaction. So when you are measuring employee satisfaction, it's not a bit of just going to the employee and say, are you satisfied? And they say yes, and then you say, our employees were satisfied. There has to be a measurement scale for that. The one that is validated and the one that is got construct valid and as well as construct reliability. So as we proceed with our studies, we are going to teach each other how to determine the validity of a measurement scale and also the reliability of a measurement scale. But generally, that's how it looks like. Maybe I can show you another one. This one on the screen is for employee satisfaction. If I go, if I scroll downwards, you will see another one for service quality. It has got five items as well. Our appearance is neat and appropriate. We provide services at the time we promise to do so. We provide prompt service to our customer. We can be trusted by our customers. We do not understand our customers' need. This one is reverse coded. We shall look at reverse coded items as we move on. But generally, that's how they are. Uh, so this, these statements which I was reading are called uh, indicators or items. They are the ones that make up a measurement scale for the construct called service quality. So that's how the measurement items are. So these are the types of items which will make up your questionnaire. So if you are developing a questionnaire, let's say you want to measure uh, those two variables, employee satisfaction and uh, service quality, you will be having such kind of items uh, in your questionnaire. And then the uh, respondents will be responding from maybe a scale ranging from one to seven with one meaning totally disagree and seven, meaning totally agree. Some will say, uh, I don't know up to, I know much, depending on how you are going to uh, name the scaling part of it. But otherwise, most of the scales, they have the range of one to seven, from strongly agree to strongly disagree. 
or totally disagree to totally agree. But these will be fixed uh, in front of the items which will be representing the measurement scale for the constant understand. So I hope uh, people have seen uh, how a measurement scale looks like. Then uh, back to our PowerPoint. Let me go back to our PowerPoint. Is my PowerPoint being visible on the screen? Not yet. The one? Not yet. So I should say stop sharing first, then share again. Yes. Okay. Uh, now I know. All right. Now let me share it again. I saw I'm now back to the original uh, PowerPoint which I was using. I think you now know how multi-item measurement skills look like. I've shown you uh, the ones from one of the top journals uh, in the scientific world. Now, these measurement skills, they can be formative or reflective. So the relationship between constructs and their measures can be formative or reflective. Get these two words, formative or reflective. They can be formative or they can be reflective. The, knowing these two things has the, got the bearing on how you are going to validate your measurement scales. So uh, you should know that either your measurement scale is formative or it's reflective. I'm going to explain how a formative a measurement scale looks like and how a reflective measurement scale looks like. But all what I want you to know now is that some are formative and some are reflective. Right? But so these measurement scales weigh changes in the underlying construct that are reflected by the changes of the indicator. All the indicators represent the underlying construct and are expected to correlate. Due to high correlation between the indicator, between indicators, the indicators are interchangeable, and dropping an indicator should not alter the conceptual meaning of a construct. Right? I'll explain this one. So we are talking of the first uh, type of uh, measurement scale which we are going to talk of. Remember, I said there are two types: formative and reflective. So we are going to start with reflective. When we are talking of reflective measurement scale, we are saying the items are a reflection of the underlying construct. In other words, they are an image, image of the underlying construct, such that use, using any item will represent the other items. Removing one item and leaving other items might not change the conceptual meaning of the construct. The construct will still remain the same because the underlying construct does not change, but what changes or what we see is changing are the indicators, which are the items. So in other words, you are free to use any item out of the pool of items that are meant to represent that construct. And using them is interchangeable. So you can remove one and still remain with the other ones still representing the construct. So it's no, normally reflective measure scales are identified by the correlations that are there between the items. The items correlate very well because they are representation of the same construct. For example, if you still remember the one for employee satisfaction, you find that Someone might be satisfied with the salary. Someone was satisfied with the working conditions. Working conditions and salary is almost the same thing. No, though not really one and the same thing, but it's almost the same thing. So we find that a uh, reflective measurement scale, you've got items that share the same meaning. It's like that dropping one item would not alter the conceptual meaning of the whole construct, right? Uh, we go ahead. Uh, 
then uh, on that one, so testing validity for formative measurement scale, you would look at convergent validity, discriminant validity, and nomological validity. In other words, when you have put a reflective measurement scale, you need to validate it by testing construct validity, which is in three forms. Construct validity is in three forms, which is convergent validity, discriminant validity, and nomological validity. Those are the types of validity which you can test for reflective measurement scales. They are not applicable to formative measurement scale. I will explain formative measurement scales later on. Then for convergent validity and discriminant validity, let me not explain them now in detail, but I'll explain them when we start testing them. Because remember, we test them later on. So that's when I will give you a proper explanation for them. But just to bear in mind that for reflective measurement scales, we normally test construct validity in three variants, which is convergent validity, discriminant validity, and homological validity. I'll explain them under SPSS, and you'll see what they mean and how they are determined. I just know that they're applicable to reflective measurement scales. Then we go to the next issue. Uh, the next issue, which I want us to look at, are formative measurement scales. So formative measurement scales, these are the scales that do not necessarily need to be tested for convergent validity and discriminant validity. Are you getting it? For formative measurement scales, we don't test for convergent validity and we don't test for discriminant validity, but we only test for content validity. So in formative measurement scales, we test only for content Valid. So these are the types of measurement scales where various items are put together to form a construct. In the reflective measurement scales, we're saying various items are reflected by the construct. But in formative measurement scales, we're saying various items are put together, are put together to form a construct. So there won't be any need for convergent validity or discriminant validity. So on this one, I'll give a good example. A good example is a uh, standard of living. For standard of living, you find that there are various dimensions which needs to be put together to form a construct of standard of living. Maybe we can look at level of education, residential uh, place where you stay, your social background, and so forth. All those things come together to form a construct of standard of living. But if you remove one item, let's say you remove where you stay, automatically it alters the meaning of the construct of uh, standard of living. So you find that we need to put together various items to form a construct under formative measurement scales, right? So I think with these types of scales which we have, uh, the next thing uh, is that we go to the actual uh, uh, data capturing and then test these things as we proceed with our studies. Uh, is there any question at the moment before I now switch on to SPSS? Any question? Can I proceed? Joe? Yes, please. Can I proceed? Yes. Are there any questions on, on, the present, on the presentation so far before I proceed? Um, I think the the the, the... The question you have put across has been heard. Um, anybody in the house with a question, just uh, go to the bottom of the screen and pick up uh, um, an arm there that asks the question. But otherwise, don't proceed. Okay. 
Uh, so let's proceed. Now we're going to SPSS. So let me share the screen. Right. So if you go to that is my screen on SPSS uh being visible on the screen. Yes. 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 Uh, we, we can see it, Doc. We can see okay. it. Yes, it's, uh, it's visible, Doc. Uh, fine. So all those with their laptops uh, installed with SPSS, whatever version you have, I think for our current study, it works. The only difference which you will notice are for advanced studies. Otherwise, for basic study, which you are starting right now, any version is applicable. So I, I suggest to make this more practical, you log in also on SPSS to the page where I am. So I'm giving you a minute for everyone with a laptop to log into where I am using you, your, your own laptop as well. So let's log in. As soon as one of you is there, let me know so that I can proceed. Because this is the practical aspect which, if you miss this one, you get frustrated with the rest of the presentation. I have seen it myself some years back when I was uh, doing quantitative analysis for business. Once you miss a, 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 the first stage, you will be frustrated with all subsequent stages because you won't be understanding where the thing is coming from. So we don't want to leave anyone behind at this particular tentative stage because we don't want anyone to get frustrated. So please quickly uh, open your SPSS so that we can move together. Whatever version you have, it will work fine for us. Right. I just want one person to say we are ready, then I move forward. Yeah, yeah you can open. move. Okay. We already had it open. Ah, perfect. Perfect. Right. So if you check on the screen there, we've got where it's written variable view and data view. Variable view and data view at the bottom corner. There's where it's written variable view and then data view. So the variable view page is where you put all your variables in your questionnaire. And then the data view page is where you enter all your data in numeric form on your questionnaire. Remember, SPSS uh, kept us data in numeric form. So it's very important to know those two tabs below, the one for data view and the one for variable view. Right, so we start with the variable view. We create all our fields before we go to the data view. Right, on the first one, I will see where it's written name there. So under name, we put all our variables. And normally in your questionnaire, you start with the demographics. Am I correct? Before you go to the substantive questions about the study. So under name, you start with the mostly with age. So just write age like the one I have typed there. And then the type, of course, you leave it as numeric, the width. I just leave it like 88. But if you know, you have got uh, more variables. I mean, you've got more characters in, the, in your variables. You can widen the width from eight. But at the moment, let's leave it at eight like that. And then decimals. Normally, I want to put it at zero so that we don't have any decimals. So you can just click zero under decimals. Under label, you put age again like this. And then under values. 
Uh, remember, we will be having various categories of ages indeed. So under those three dots under values, you click there. And uh, something like this called value labels will pop up. And let's say uh, the value of one, we are saying the age group is 18 years to 20, uh, let's say to 30 years. So 18 to 30, I'm typing, and then you say age. The second category, we have an age group of 31, 31 to 40. And then you say age. The third category, you have got 41 to 50. So you type 41 to 50, yes. And then you add. And then you go to the fourth category, you have got 51, 51 to 60. And then you add. And then the last category, maybe you've got 60 years and above. So you just put 60 and plus like this. And then you add and then see okay. Is that correct? Is that okay? Then the type of, yes? Uh, I, I think I'm somewhat behind. It's okay. I, I, I'm, I am on value, value. I mean, value labels, but uh, uh -huh. I, I didn't see how you you, you opened the the, the the other page instead. Uh, I think I'm stuck there. I'm a, but I'm already on the value, value labels. Right. So on age, you got it. Yes, and I've got it. You're on labels. Yes. Right. I'm seeing uh, that sort of uh, triangle with three dots. Yes, yes. I I. I'm there. Click, click that one. Yes, I've clicked. And when you click it, what, what pops up? A, a box up here is value labels, value labels, value. Uh, yes. Okay. yes. So yes, on, on value type one, type one, that is the first category which you have. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Then on label, you type 18 to 30. 18 to 30, okay. Uh -huh. And then say add. All right. And then it comes again the same uh, field type mm -hmm. two and value. Mm -hmm. Label 31 to 40. Okay. Then again, value three, mm -hmm. 41 to 50. Okay. Up to five, where you will say skist it above. Okay. And then you say, okay. All right. Uh, okay, it's clear now. Okay. Right. Uh, but we are going to repeat the same procedure again. Right. Uh, let's go to measure. Now, uh, one, two, three, up to five does not mean that one is got lesser value than two in our case. In other words, being in the age group 18 to 30 does not mean that you have less value than in two, which is age group 31 to 40. Are we together? So in other words, it's just labeling. One, two, three, four, five are just nominal labeling to distinguish one group from the other without indicating whether the other group is more important than the other one or whether the other group is got more value than the other one. So under measure, they put nominal to indicate that one, two, three are just differentiating labels. That does not depict that the other group is more value than the other group. Right? Then we go under number two. Normally, after age, we've got gender in your question years. And then this mouse, you put a zero as usual. And under label, you type gender again. And then you go to values. You see it's written none there. You click in that box. And those three dots pop up. You click on those three dots. Uh, the value labels sub table pops up. And then you put one under label. Under 
other value and other label you type male and then you n then value comes up again you type true and then the label you type female and then you end and then you say okay because we've got only two categories either someone is a male or a female especially here in Zimbabwe of course in other countries there are other people who are neither male or female but here uh, our law recognizes that someone is either male or female there is no another category other than those two so you type you click okay and again one or two does not mean the other one is important than the other one or the other one is got more value than the other one. So the measure the under measure, click where it's written unknown and put nominal. Okay, admire is raised the hand. Admin, can you allow him to speak? Thank you, Doc. Uh, I just need some clarity. Why are we always keeping with uh, it? Is there a specific reason why we always keep it eight? Thank you. Right. Uh, admire with eight, it only talks about the characters in our variable. If our variables, let's say there's a big word that is got more than eight letters, we can adjust that one. Let's say, what name do you think which can have more than eight characters? Masasile. <laughs> yes. Masasire. So if we would wait like Masasire, we would need now to adjust our width to accommodate uh Masasire. But Thank at the so moment, well, all well, our well, ways are fitting. Yes. Right. So from gender, we can now go to um, what are the demographic variables do we look at? Residential. Res residential area. Let me say res the education. Right, let's start with education. Education. Right. So while you are on education, then here we click education again. Fine. Uh, we click again here, level of education. So we can say one level primary. Someone has got primary education. And then we add two secondary education. And then we add three tertiary education. And then we add, and then say, okay. Again, this is just nominal. So that's how we record our demographic variables. And then we go to items. And uh, normally after demographics, we now measure uh, issues to do with the, the very variable, the very variables which we are measuring. Let's say it's employee satisfaction. So we can start here. After this, let's say that we've only reported these three demographics. We now want to go to employee satisfaction. And for employee satisfaction, we now use our measurement scale. Remember, our measurement scale had five, five items. Right? So we look at the questions in our employee satisfaction. Or let's say service quality. Okay, let me say service quality. Uh, for service quality, service quality, uh, we code, we have to code now those items. So the first item under service quality, we call it SQ, representing service quality. So we say SQ1. The second item. SQ2. Third item, SQ3. Fourth item, SQ4. SQ4. 
fifth item SQ5. So SQ there is representing service quality. And then we also have employee satisfaction. So the code for employee satisfaction, we can say ES, employee satisfaction. So we say employee satisfaction one, employee satisfaction two, employee satisfaction three, employee satisfaction four, employee satisfaction five, and so forth. Right, so we put our decimal at zeros for everything as usual. Uh -huh. We put them at zero as usual. Then we come to the labels. Okay, our uh, claimants, Nyamanji raised the hand. Admin, can you please allow me to talk? Uh, Doc, I, I thought you made a mistake on the on the employees instruction codes for two and three, I think. Okay, okay. There's one, two, three. Oh, it was supposed to be ES. Yeah, you are correct. Employee satisfaction, employee satisfaction, like this. So thank you very much for that correction. Right, now we've put the codes. And then we now need to put the labels. What was item number one saying, the one which we recorded, SQ1. So we go back to our question here. In our question here, SQ1 was saying, our appearance is neat and appropriate. That's what the item said in our question here. So we type here, our appearance, Is neat, is neat and what? Inappropriate. Is neat and appropriate. Right? We go to the second one. SQ2 said we provide services at the time we promised. So we type, we provide services at the time we promise. Where are we getting these statements? We're getting them from our question here. Are we together? These are the statements in our question here. SQ3 says we provide prompt services. We provide prompt services. So we type, we provide prompt services. Uh, we provide prompt services. <laughs> Okay. Just check your microphone whether it's on mute or not. Otherwise, we are interrupting a very important uh, point that's being um, uh, developed here. Thank you, Doc Mkucha. Proceed. Okay. Uh, Doc Famba? Yes, Doc Mkucha. I don't know how to aid <laughs> you as an admin. <laughs> um, Okay, uh, Doc, it's, it's all right. Doc, Doc, all right. Can you make me a host? Like, 
you just click the three dots. That's okay. You just click the three dots on my name. So we are now on item four, we can be trusted by our customers. Right, we go to SQ5. Where am I getting these statements? I'm getting it from my questionnaire. So don't be surprised. Where is he getting these things which he is typing? They are, you get them from your questionnaire, the one which you have administered to your respondents. SQ5, we understand our customers. So we type. And we are just telling what we get from the question here. We can understand our customers. Right, so that was for service quality. Now we go to employee satisfaction. As again, I'll go to my question here and look. Uh, the first item there is we are satisfied with the salary. So I'll go and type, we are satisfied with the salary. We are, we are satisfied with the salary. Forgive me for slow speed in typing. We learned long back when the computers were not yet there. We are satisfied with the promotion. That is item number two. We are satisfied with the promotion. We are satisfied with the promotion. All right, we go to item three. There's a, there's a hand up, uh, Dr. Makucha. Okay, let me just take item number three. We are satisfied with the job nature. We are satisfied with the job nature. Okay, uh, go ahead. Uh, who is asking the question? Please tell him to go ahead. Lorenzia. Okay, sorry to take you back, Doc. I think I'm a bit lost. Uh, under the smalls, we have left it two on SQ1. Okay, you have corrected it. <laughs> wow, thank you very much. <laughs> right, so we go to the fourth item. I'm taking these items from the person here, please. Some may be wondering, where is he getting these things? We are satisfied with the relationship. So I will type again, we are satisfied with the relationship. Right, we go to the last item. Uh, come here, we are satisfied with the supervision. We type, we are satisfied with the supervision. Right, so I've now created my fields. But then, uh, under the values, I need to put the values. You still remember in your questionnaires, you'll be saying one, what do you know I write? Strongly disagree, that's all. Strongly Disagree. That's what you normally write. So we type it here. Disagree. And then you say add to disagree. You say add three. You say indifferent. Let's say the five point scale is eight, four, agree. 
sorry, I put a green way supposed to be written for. Then here I write agree and add and then five strongly agree and then add and then okay. Have you seen how we did it today? So you now need to do the same for SQ2, SQ3, up to SQ5, and also on ES1, up to ES5. You have to type it like that. But because uh, these days we are lazy, we don't need to type everything again if it is similar on subsequent uh, transactions. You simply need to click there where you've already typed. And then those three dots will come. And then you left click those three dots. In fact, you even, even inside you can click and say copy. Now when you've copied, you go ahead and paste on every field like this. And now you're just pasting. Instead of writing again, I just copy and paste was the same information for every item. So I just paste like this. Right. Now you go to measure. One is different from two. If you check here, strongly agree is different from disagree. Strongly disagree is different from disagree is different from indifferent, is different from agree. And it's different from strongly agree. So here yeah, I have to, I have to, to change. I should yeah, say agree. Right. So you see there are differences. It means it's numeric. Are we together? It means it's numeric. So under measure, you now put scale here. You put a scale because the numbers one, two, three shows that there are differences in value. Unlike in, in our case before, the numbers one, two, three previously, they did not show differences, they were just labels. But under these items now, one, two, three, four, five means there are some differences. So we now label them scale. Once we've done that, will be ready to capture our data because all the fields are now there. So from there, we switch from variable view to data view. But before we switch from variable view to data view, administrators, can you allow those who may want to ask some questions to ask on what we've done so far? Hello, Doc. Yes, sir. There, there, there was a question in the message box which was asking on whether when you transit from age, gender to education, service quality, the section, uh, the afternoon, then go to type, right? The type there under age is numeric and then gender. The question was, does it remain uh, yeah, does it remain the same? Uh, it's almost the same because we are going to to use numeric data to identify this. Remember age, we have said there are groups one, two, three, four, five, already is numeric. On gender, again, we said one and two. Again, it's numeric. But if there was a section for names, where we need names of various respondents, we would have put string. But otherwise, uh, it's okay. It is just, they should just leave it as numeric. There are two Thank participants you. raising their hands. Allow them to ask. I'm seeing two participants raise the hands. Thank you, Doc. This is Admire. Um, okay. I just want a bit of clarity on measure because okay. when it was non 
a scale measurement, we put nominal, but where do we put ordinal? Because I thought the two are part, the form part of scale either is ordinal or nominal scale. Thank you. Yes, ordinal is whereby uh, the data is ranked in an ordinal manner where the other one probably is ranked higher than the other one without specific values to say this one has got more of this value than the other one. But to say just it's more, it's higher than this other one. Let's say you are ranking um, three types of meals we have received in a restaurant. If you want to rank the best, where you can say chicken, in, you put maybe at number one, nanos at number two, KFC at number three. They are in order now, it's put now, where the other one is more important than the other one. Are we together? Yes, thank you. Or maybe you are ranking your sports teams to say Man City at number one, Man U at number two, Liverpool number three, and so forth. You, you now put it as odd now. But in our case, it was just nominal and scale. Another question before we move to the next session. Next section. Yes, uh, my name is Patrick. I, I have a question on the uh, label column. Uh, okay. My question is, is it a problem if we, we, we use the, the label name on the label column, uh, for example, uh, under the, the item SQ1, you can just say uh, uh, on the label column SQ1 again, uh, rather than writing all the, the, the statements. Thank you. Yeah, uh, you are very correct. There's no problem at all. But now uh, it's a shortcut which you normally use. Uh, as you advance with your studies, you would no longer need to waste more, most of your time putting the labels. But uh, uh, the first stage, you need to be told the, the conventional thing before we tell the shortcuts. But your shortcut is correct. Sometimes there's no need even to type these statements. You can retype the labels. Personally, myself, I just retype the labels. Then. I think even the data which we have sent you, you've seen that they've retyped the label. I've retyped the labels also, but that is the shortcut. So we know the, the the normal thing first, and then the shortcut later. But you are correct. Okay, thank you. The Kuzma has been raising at the end. Allow me to speak for him. Okay, thank you, Doc. It's a him. Uh, I, I've, made, I've made to understand that this is a questionnaire. Uh, what I'm not sure of is what what are we mentioning? Like, what is the topic to this whole thing? Like, what is the topic? Okay. Uh, the topic would be anything. Uh, here we are starting our Zoom. We have linked all the other uh, items. Yes, I mean, other things about the stage. Now we have approached the data analysis section. So maybe as a statistician, I may not know what exactly is the topic the researcher is covering and so forth. But all what he has given me is that these are my variables, these are my questionnaire. Can you capture data for me and do the analysis for me? But I can say maybe the impact of employee satisfaction on service quality. Mm -hmm. It can be the more directing role of demographics on the relationship between service quality and employee satisfaction. It can be anything. Now, Mr. Doc, thank you very much. Yeah. Right. Can I go ahead? If there are no more questions. But how have we all appreciated where we are at the moment? So, so, sorry, Doc, I have a question. Yes. Hello, Doc, how are you? Yes, go ahead. How are you, saying? Sorry, I was booted out. I didn't know how you you, you came about. Uh, I'm seeing one strongly on values there. I was booted out. I just came in. Okay. I was saying in your question here, 
you will be having statements like this. So these statements like our appearance is new. Most of your questions will look like this. So we have just captured what is there in your question. So all what we've done here was to capture what is in your question before we capture the values. Oh, what name to be? Hmm? Okay. Can we proceed? Right, so from variable yes, we, can view, proceed, we now come to data view. Now here, if you check uh, on your extreme left, there's one, two, three, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, going downwards up to infinity. And so this will be your questionnaire ideas. So your questionnaire number one, let's say someone is in the in the age group of 30 to 31 to 40. 31 to 40, we say it gave it a label of two, isn't it? So we put our two there, gender, maybe someone is female, we put two there. Education, maybe someone has got tertiary education, we put it there. On service SQ1, you still remember the statement, probably the person said three, here they said four, here said uh, two, here said four, here said five, two, five, three, four, two, or like this. You go to question number two, you are capturing your data. One, two, two, one, two, three, one, two, two, three, two, three, two, like this. Are you seeing how you will be capturing your data? Yes, Doc. So you'll be doing that for all your questionnaires. Here we've captured for two questionnaires only. So you do for all your questionnaires, even if they are 1,000, you'll be capturing under data view like that, going downwards. Any question on this? On how you would be capturing your data? Yes, the AI in Gamanya raised the end. Thank you, Doc. Um, I, I'm thinking I'm lost, Doc. Maybe can you repeat on this section now? Okay. Uh, which section, sir? No, uh, 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 you left me when you, that guy asked about the, that section. This one is the Maybe number Buddha can doesn't go not to the pharmacy, it is a scrap of one two one two. Okay, uh, fine. A uh, we started with the age. Were you there? Yes, I, I, I was there from there, but this section, I'm asking him when you're out to one two. I think I'm lost. Okay. Uh, let's say uh, the in question number one, our yes. respondent is in age group of uh, forty three. He is forty three, so he is in the age group of forty one to fifty, isn't it? Like yeah, is that so? Yes, you can go ahead. Um. So in other words, we gave that age group of forty one to fifty, gave it a level of three. So when we go to data you now under age, someone having age in age of 54 will be in the age group of three. So we put three under age. And then we come here, you see, uh, we have got gender. Our gender, we say if someone is male, he is one. If someone is female, he is two. So if we have got a female here. It means we are going to put two all together. Yes. Then we come to education. 
education, we said education is in three categories. And we said one represents primary, two represents secondary, three represents tertiary. So if someone is the tertiary qualification, in our question, you come here and say, under education, E. And then we come again under service quality one. We talk about appearance. Our appearance is meeting appropriate. And then we were saying that statement to the respondent. And maybe the, the respondent strongly agree with us. So strongly agrees under what? Level yes. five. So we come here and say, SQ1, five. Then again, we come to SQ2. We provide services at the time we promise. Maybe uh, the respondent disagree. This agrees under two. So we come here and write two. Are we together now? Yes, and you can go ahead, do. Thank you. Ah, thank you very much. Any other person with another question? So that's how we drew for all our questionnaires, whether they are 20, they are 30, they are 50, or 1,000. You just capture your data like this. And that way, you'll be okay. Any other question? Right, can all oh, their twins are raised? Yes, go ahead. Admin, please assist the twins that are raised. Um, can the first one go ask? There is Ivan Gamanya. Can make Why is I unmute? Mean? Unmute. My problem is that I don't have the full view of them, so. Let me check. There is uh, Jablan Garwi. Please unmute and go ahead. Uh, Jablan, can yeah. you hear me? I think we are talking to a machine there. He might not be behind that. Uh, that hand anymore. Um, who is the other one? I think Dr. which I may proceed. Okay. Right. So when we're entering our numbers, alternative, if you want to see whether you're not the number which you are entering tallies with the label which you have given. Right, Javlan is the end again. Maybe give him a try again. Jablan, uh, kindly unmute and speak. Uh, I, I think he's on his machine. Okay. Fine. Sorry, Javlin is saying, I think the worst is to unmute me. Check at the chat box. So please unmute him and let him ask. We don't want to leave anyone behind. I like that phrase. <laughs> <laughs> to be out now is being booted out. Yeah, I think that was, there was a problem with his um, huh? connectivity there. Oh, he's, in, he's still in. Right. In case you want to see whether you are the label, which you, the number which you are capturing Tal is the label which you have put. You come here where it's written value labels and you click here. And then the values will come. Now, if I enter 
any number, it will be reflected by the values I have put like this, like this. And let's say I put a four here, I put a three here, I put a two here, I put a one here, I put a five here, and so forth. If I start here again, let's say someone is in the age group of one, you come like this. Someone is male, it will come like this. Someone is primary education, it will come like this. Someone is strongly agree, it will come like this, and so on. So you've got the option of having these labels. If you don't want them, just click here and the numbers come back. But if you want to work with the labels on, mm -hmm. click here, they, they, they reflect. If you don't want them, click there again. Are we together? Right. Uh, right. Ah, uh, Doku Famba. Doku Famba. Hello, Doku. Right. Uh, I think we've shown them how to capture their data. If there is no any question on data capturing, the next thing which we now have to do is data analysis. But before we go to data analysis, I would want them to just do a short practice on data capturing using their own questionnaires, the ones which we, they have. I understand most of them have already done research before or in the course, some questionnaires with them. Because when they capture, maybe in, the, in 30 to 20 to 30 minutes, when they create all those levels and do the capturing for one or two questionnaires only, then they come back and if they had any questions or queries, they will be able to ask the proper questions knowing that I tried this and it failed. So is it possible to give them just 30 minutes to attempt on their own to capture data? You create all these fields and capture their own data for one or two questionnaires only. And then it's very, it's very possible. I think that's a part of the learning process. Yes. Then after that, they will ask me the questions on where they encounter some problems. Then yes. after that, we'll go on the real analysis now. Okay, that's fine. Do we so, want a minute break? Uh, a shorter. Uh, no, it's not. It's not. It's not a break. It's thirty minutes for them to practice. Yes, I'm hearing you. That's why I'm calling it a break from the uh, screening. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. From screening, thirty minutes break. Yes. So come bedtime. Uh, right now it's half two out into my watch. So probably at the three o'clock it will be fine. Okay, Doc. We can reconvene at three. Okay, okay. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Go practice that one. When you come back, ask me all the difficulties which you have faced so that at least we iron out everything. Jablani, can we just clear with you what was the problem with your uh, unmuting yourself? Okay, what time? Okay. At three. We'll be back at three. Vankire Karinka is raised the end. Vankire Karinka is the end raised. Please allow him to ask. Isn't it wise for us to be in the Zoom room? Uh, uh, groups so that those who have not uh, been able to connect to the PSS uh, 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 application can be able to to do the assignment you have said with others. We have the laptops we have connected. I I think if it is possible, then it would be good. Let me hear from the administrators how it can be done. But it's fine. Hello. Thank thank you.
Doc Samba, it's possible. We can just go to the breakout room. Yeah, it's possible, but I'm not admin. You can make me admin, then I can break them. Oh, you, you are not admin still? Yes, yes. How do we make you an admin if we know we we'll do that? Just click the my my name, then the three dots, then you can assign it. It's the host. Make host. Make host. Right? Yeah. Yes. Huh? So that power is in Mukucha, not me. Um, I think I managed to do it, Doc. Yeah, now yes, I yes. Now I've succeeded. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so we just create maybe there are only 45 people in there. So no, four let's, rooms. Let's give ten. No, maybe 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 six rooms. Because we don't want uh, we, 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 we don't want to. those. We don't want people who just carry dead the back. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so. We just so, uh, get the, the, the team leaders uh, yes. know, getting to their first uh, the room. We already have the rooms, yeah? so people should join the rooms. Okay, we we are well met in room room two. Uh, maybe the first thing we want to do is to to ask someone to be our team leader here. Hello, guys. There are very few of us here, so everyone has a chance to say something. Who wants to be team leader? Does the team leader need to have SPSA? I, I think the team leader must have an SPSA PSS application so that you can be able to do the assignment on his or a laptop. Okay. Does anyone have SPSS? Unfortunately, I failed to, to, to download a free version. Yes, for me, I have downloaded a button to install. Okay, has anyone got one that's um, working? Mine is not working. The download it, but can't install it or open in documentation that the SPS is doing. Yeah, I think it's the same problem I'm facing. I also downloaded. But when it comes, I downloaded the 30 day free trial, but when it comes to installing, it's failing. What about uh, who else is here? The other two people. Uh, Wangiri. Wangiri. Oh, guys. I suggested for the for the Zoom room uh, groups because I'm using a phone. Actually, I'm away from office. I'm using a phone. I could have I could have been using my laptop, but I'm using a phone. So I thought in our group somebody is having an SPSS uh, uh, application for us to use or his laptop. Now, as it turns out, there's nobody who has that here. Unless uh, I. If someone can assist with installation, we can install to those who downloaded and are failing to install. 
I, I thought that the process required um, deinstalling any antivirus first. And then. Oh, yeah. So I, I did all those steps, but I'm, I, I'm failing. I, I'm where there is, where I'm supposed to open a certain phone, but it's, it's a bin file. It can't be opened. Oh. So I'm having challenges. I don't know how, how basically can I be assisted? We we need to borrow some from you know some somebody from some other room who has the thing installed. Yes, yeah, maybe that that can help us to do the assignment. Yeah, let me try to navigate and get. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. Hello, I, I'm trying to, sorry to interrupt, I'm trying to, to borrow, to borrow a person who has um, the software installed on their machine to join group, uh, I think, um, room two. Are you hearing me? Anybody? Admire, do you have the software? Do you have the software on your machine, the SPSS? Uh, yes, for me, I think I don't yes. uh, I don't yes. I think I joined that, but it's so, so none of you has that software installed on their machine. I'm not sure about that. Minor? Let's yeah, I do. I don't have to. I did not manage to install the tray. I did not manage to install the software. Yeah, so that's the same case with um, room two, I think, and uh, room three. Now this is, what room am I now? Room five. Yeah, this is room five. I also managed to, 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 to download, but yeah, yeah, then like managed to install it. Yeah, there's lots of uh, stuff about the, I mean, generally, obviously, one has um, antivirus software installed and, and told you have to deactivate that first and then download and install the software and then reinstall the antivirus. So it's quite a process. Okay, so without the, the, the software, on any laptop, um, it, it's a bit of a blind revision, isn't it? Because you can't practice anyway.
kapamba. Kapamba.
Is dog in the house? Too loud? Go yes, back. I'm there, dog. Yeah, I think you have the make make dog farm back home. Just check where you you, you got him co to co-host in previously. Okay, let me try and see. Okay. How he did it the last time? I think he was saying check on the three dots next to his name. Yes. Uh, is, is the instruction there? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's now the host again. Yeah, that's right. Jablan, you want to say something? What is it? Thank you, Doc. I, I wanted to, to say, I think after doing the variable, the variable view, I, I I booted out and I lost all the data view. I wanted to know when I reconnected, I already saw the uh, presenting of the figures. I didn't know how he, he, he read that page. Maybe I wanted if he, I could get assistance that I captured all the data, the variable view correctly. I don't the data view. I, I didn't know how to navigate on that page. I think the, the breakout rooms, I went to three rooms. Um, it appeared there was nobody who had uh, an installed um, uh, working software there. I don't know the experience from the balance of the rooms. There were six rooms all together. So maybe, um, Doc Mukucha, you could lead us into the review. Okay. Um, okay, 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 okay. Let's see. Let me share the screen. Let me share the screen. So, Javlani, your challenge was here. Uh, uh, the, the, on this page, I'm, I'm fine. On the variable, so I managed successfully. So, you go now to data view. Yes, data. That's yeah. That's where I got disconnected. So what we said was this, you are seeing the uh, under age. Uh -huh. You see the categories for age we have here. Yes. Which category are you in? Um, so did you click on the data view? I am still on variable view. Uh, which category are you in? Okay. Yourself. I put the... I mean okay. yourself. Yes, or, or myself. Yes. For that one, for it. So 31 to 40 is which category? Number two. Under, number two. So if you yes. come to that, if you come to that as you hear under age, now you put two like this. Have you seen? Okay. So I come back to variable again. I've used these variables for age, which uh, category are you in for gender, sorry? Uh, that's category number one. Uh, number one. So we come here and after gender, we put number one and so mm -hmm. forth. Okay. Let's say we are on SQ1, that's the quality. Appearance is not appropriate. We have got these labels. Uh, how is the appearance at your workplace? Where can um, you put it if you say it is appropriate? Where would you place it? Okay, uh, I'll say that's number four. Agreed. Number four, agree. Yes. So mm -hmm. if you come data view under SQ1, we put number four like this. And if you want to work with labels, visible, you come here, this dot is label value labels, and click here, and the values will come like this. Okay. So you can work with the values being shown there, or you can just work with the numeric class only. The choice will be yours. Okay. So it will be for each question here. So it's written one, two, three here. Up to 23 going downwards. These are the questionnaire numbers. 
So question number one, number two, number three, number four, and so forth. Okay. Yes. All right. Are you are you now satisfied? <laughs> I think I'm done. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Ah, thank you very much. Thank you. Right. So, Che, I don't know. Can we proceed now to data analysis? Let's do that, uh, Doc. Okay. Uh, I will be. Now I'm sharing the data which you all have. Uh, there's a data set called Terence, which I sent you some time ago. Let's all go to that data set. I think you still remember the data set said called Terence. Let's all go to Terence. Are we there? Yes, under, ter under Terence, you can see uh, the demographics are there, like gender, marital status, age, education. Hello, hello. Yes, how are you doing? Maybe just to check if people have got, uh, have managed to open the data, data set. Okay, so I can give you some few minutes to open the data set. Uh, colleagues, are we able to open the data set? Yes, we already had it open. We will uh, try. I'm trying, though. Okay. Hello, Doc. I think they are ready now. Uh, perfect. Um, right. Um, uh, I think you are all seeing this screen. So for gender, it's clear, marital status, age, education. And then we have got uh, someone earlier on, someone was saying, why don't you just write the 
the, 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 the codes again are label. This is a shortcut which we have done. If you see under label, we did not even bother to write all the statements. We simply repeated uh, the codes under name and repeated them under the label. That was the shortcut. Uh, obviously, someone would be knowing what LF represents, what o, OFR represents, what SF represents, and so forth. So that's how we did it as a shortcut. But what is more important now is to analyze. So if you check here, besides the demographic of gender, marital status, age, and education, we have got latent variables. The one uh, represented by LF means logistic flexibility. This is a uh, data set for someone who was doing supply chain management. So LF represented logistics flexibility. Uh, SF represented supply flexibility. And PF represented procurement flexibility. So because there were uh, four, five items for logistics flexibility and the seven items for supply flexibility and four items for procurement flexibility, we need now to condense them and combine them. And so to combine them, we go under, um, under, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Under analyze, transform. No, my screen, my screen can't come out clearly because of, uh, Right, uh, good, my screen. <laughs> right, are you seeing this written transform? So you go under mm -hmm. transform and compute variable. Transform, compute variable. Let me start again. Go is transform, compute variable. Right, I said LF represents logistics flexibility. So our target variable there is logistics, logistics flexibility, like this. So when you type logistics flexibility, make sure it's one word. So you have to put an underscore. If you don't put an underscore, it will say an illegal character. Let me demonstrate, let me remove the underscore and you see how, how it will behave. Uh, normally it refuses if you don't put an underscore, it will say illegal character, fine. So after doing that, you come here and click on these two brackets and then they come under numeric expression. Here under numeric expression, now we are going to pick all the items for logistics flexibility, starting with LF1, put it in the brackets, you click on the plus sign, and you add LF2, you put it in the brackets, click on the plus sign, click LF3, put it in the bracket sign, click add again, LL4, put in the bracket sign, add again, LL5, put it in the bracket. So you have put all the five items for logistic flexibility. And then outside the bracket, you click and put a divide sign. And they are going to divide by the number of items, which in this case is five. So you click on five like this. After that, you say, okay. When you've said, okay, if you come to your var variable view, you find then you now have a new variable called logistic flexibility, which was not there. And if you go to your data view, 
at the extreme end, you can see you now have logistics flexibility as another variable at the end. Previously, remember, you did not have this one. Again, you come on transform, compute variable, and then say reset. And then you go to supply flexibility. So you type supply flexibility. And then you come under numeric expression, you put your brackets, and you put all the items under supply flexibility represented by the code SF. So you start with SF1, you put it there, you add, you go to SF2, you put it there by this arrow, you add SF3, you put it there by this arrow, you add SF4, you put it by this arrow, you add SF5, you put it by this arrow, you add SF6, put it again by this arrow, you add SF7, you put it by this arrow. So all the items are now in the bracket. And then you divide by the number of items, which is seven, to create the average for supply flexibility. And then you say, okay. Once you've said, okay, if you come to your uh, data view, you now have supply flexibility as a new variable. And the variable view, you now have supply flexibility as the new variable. Right, uh, then maybe under this small, you can now come and just adjust to put it at zero. And you put it at zero. And then maybe here you can now type logistics flexibility. And then here, supply flexibility. Right, so you have already added the items uh, representing different variables and averaged them to create new variables. So uh, there is someone who question on this part, let me know. Please let me know if someone is lost here before we proceed. Is there anyone with a special question? Yes. Is there? Yes, go ahead. The LF1s, LF2s, LF3s, those are representing different containers, right? Yes. So right now, we, we are now combining all those different questionnaires into one variable, which is logistics flexibility, which we were doing. Exactly. Ah, thank you very much. So, so now what I want you to do, I did for logistics flexibility, I did for supply flexibility. There's the one left there, uh, procurement flexibility with four items, F1, two, three, four. And you using that data, do the average for that one. The same way we've done for the other two. Let's quickly do that one and see who we'll get lost. So how many minutes? Two minutes, one minute. Famba. Dr. Famba. Hello. Let's give them a minute to do uh the same thing on procurement flexibility. Okay, Doc. Right, so go ahead, guys. Do procurement flexibility. We we'll give you one minute. Should they, have got the, should they go to the room or they are doing it here? Ah, they are doing it here. Each one on its own data set. Ah, okay, that's good. There's no need for room. Since everyone is with the data set, each one should simply go to his data set and uh, try to do that. Or but doc, uh, yes. doc, unfortunately, yes. some of us failed to install that PSA. So if I am suggesting that you go back to those rooms so that you are all, all the same page. Okay, let's hear from the chairman, Dr. Fam, whether he agrees to that. Dr. Famba. 
because I didn't hear the suggestion. They said some of them don't use SPSA. So they are suggesting if they go to the rooms, at least they can share the SSS with those who eat. Is it a function of time? Uh, I think he, because if, if we keep on going to the rooms, then we will uh, use a lot of time in the rooms. We need more time in the rooms than here. Perhaps what we perhaps what we do, Doc. Let's uh, pick one. If there's a student who has got uh, SPSS, then that student should can lead. Yes. So who has got SPSS? Who can share the screen and show us how it's done? Anyone with SPS, just to try, guys. You want to drive by trying. And you want, you want to kill you by trying. Parisa <laughs> Mjona. Doc. I tried to see. Unfortunately, I'm one who is struggling to store the, the SPS in my computer. Unfortunately, I had to install one I had before so that I could. Uh, Store this updated version. Okay. Do you know anyone who has got uh, APSs in this? Oh, maybe you can try. Uh, yeah, that lady, Madijiza, who were together in room two. Madijiza, can you just do a trial? Just want to see whether people have uh, captured the first two attempts. Mandy, she's away, is she? If I had SPS, I was going to try. Okay. <laughs> but I have an issue with my business. It's something to do with, with the compatibility issues. I don't know. Yeah, it's a little bit compatibility. compatibility. Uh, I don't want uh, to try it. Yeah, I, I've got SPSS. Uh, unfortunately, in uh, the phone, Zang, but I, from my side, it's straightforward. Yeah, uh, but I, one of you doing it. One yeah. Of one of doing it. So I think I can just put my camera, then I turn it around, then I, I'll quickly show the guys. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if they can see, but uh, because what, what, what you said is we transform. Then we compute mm -hmm. variable. When mm -hmm. we compute variable here, I had done it, so I'm going to reset. I will say, I thought that you will not see clearly. Oh, you're going to see clearly. Uh, then yes. that, then, uh, just a minute. Doc Mukucha, you need to give the, the, the course participant who wants to share the screen, um, like a cohort, um, so they can share their phone screen. Let me share. Let me okay. Let me yes, share. Yeah, share screen. Give, okay. Share screen is possible. Give them the power to do so, yeah. Yeah, they do it. Anyone can just share screen. Ah, good. Yes, and I put a break. I want to get the phone so let's get ready to get the phone there. What's the point of the phone? Go ahead. Near betting office or something. Is it showing now? Yes, it's showing. Go ahead. It's OK. OK, man. It's because I want to see So what jokes said? was that uh, we go, I had already done it, but I will do it again. We go here, uh, transform, we compute variable. What I had already done, it, let me reset. Then I put my procurement flexibility. Go to reset so that, that you, you start again. Yeah, that's what I did. Reset. Then I write procurement uh, underscore flexibility. 
Then I go to numeric expression. I put my brackets. Then I go to PF1. I put it in as PF2. I am putting it in plus PF3. I am putting it in plus PF4. I am putting it in. Then I go to the bracket. I put the division sign. I divide by the number of uh, observations, which are, are four. Then I say OK. Because I already died, so I'm just going to say OK. Now I have my procurement visibility. Yeah. Okay. Uh, excellent. I think that's excellent. I think that's it. I will click on stop sharing. Hi. Ah, uh, so we now have our our third variable. See on my on my on my data set. Uh, let me also repeat it. But I have it also for for third uh, analysis. So reset. So procurement. Flexibility. Right. Mm. So we pick our PF one plus PF two plus PF two plus PF four. I did that. Oh. Okay. You left the division sign. Yes, now it's done. Fine. Right, so for coming flexibility. So now once you have combined variables like that, like the person who did study the three variables. So now we have two variables are there. Next thing is now to test the hypothesis with this uh, student wanted to test. I will do that. So we now go to the next section, which is a uh, hypothesis testing. Or maybe before we go to the hypothesis testing, we need to do the descriptive statistics, isn't it? So, for the descriptives, we can start with the descriptives. Then we go to hypothesis testing later. Probably because the demographics, we need to know how many were women, how many were males, how many were we, in which age group, and so forth. So, now we have a doctor. Hello. Hello, doctor. Uh, let me see if I can overcome this challenge. What's this? This, this tab on top, which is, ah, no, it's done now. I have only to reduce, uh, to reduce this so that I can see my window very well. Now it's clear. Fine. Uh, so if you to analyze, then descriptive statistics, then frequencies. So in this age now, in this uh, in this dialog box, put your gender, marital status, age, education levels, and then say okay. So it was like this will come. So you can see, you had fifty-two. Males, 48 females, and the percentage were 52 males, 52 females. 
Then you go to marital status. Twenty-five single, twenty-nine married. A lot. A lot. Watch that dog. Okay. Yes. It's not coming out. It's the the statistics are not coming out. I'm it's, those discrete statistics. Uh, am I sharing the screen? Yes, I'm sharing, but the scripts, the results are not coming out. Serious? Maybe yes. the results are a different page, Doc. Maybe they are, maybe you have to sh share a different page. Okay. <laughs> yeah, now I see. Let me, let me see the different page they came. Right, this one, is it now showing? Yes, it's now showing. Right, so these are the results we got. So if you see for gender, there were 52 males, 28 females. The percentages are shown. Uh, for marital status, 25 were single, 29 married, 25 divorced, 21 widowed, and the percentages are showing again. It's for age and the same for education. Is it clear? Yes. Ah, good. So we were an terrain. There's our terrain here. So that's how we deduce our demographics. So you just copy that information, put it in your demographics table, and you are done. Then you go to hypothesis testing. This is too dead. Yet a hypothesis that uh, supplier flexibility has an impact on procurement flexibility. Supplier flexibility has an impact on procurement flexibility. So type of analysis you need to do a grain analysis. So what you do is go to uh, you now look at this coefficients table. It shows that supplier did supplier flexibility has got an impact on government flexibility. What evidence do we get from this output? Uh, first, look at the T values. If the T values are greater than two, it means the relationship is statistically significant. Like here is 8.446. And if the p value is less than the one written sig is a p value. The one written sig is a p value. So if the p value is less than 0 0.05, like in this case is less than 0 0.5, it's also the evidence that the relationship is statistically significant. So what you can conclude here, we can conclude that suppliers flexibility has got a statistically significant influence on procurement flexibility. Are we getting it? Yes. Ah, good. Right, so now I want you to test uh, whether um, in this case, we'd say apply flexibility, programming flexibility, whether logistic flexibility has an effect on procurement flexibility. And we test whether logistics flexibility has an effect on procurement flexibility. Someone do that. Let's stop sharing. Patrick, want to try? Uh, unfortunately, Doc, I'm using my phone. I have my laptop and the FPS is here, but I can't share my screen. Okay, so who can share the screen? Who can share the screen? No one. Who can share the screen? 
and you try this one. Rosemary, can you try? Hello, Doc. I think there's a problem with my SPSS. When I try to open that data, it's saying SPSS process is unavailable. So I'm unable to try. Yes. So I, I want to share the screen, but the challenge is I don't know how to share the screen, but I've done the computation. Go away, it's written the screen and click that one. Just check yeah. the middle of your bottom ribbon. Okay, I see it. Yeah. I see it. Okay, 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 okay. Where are we now? Yes, we are here. Okay. That's my screen. Are we all seeing my screen? Yes. 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 We are seeing it. Okay. So we are on uh, analyze. We say we want to do the regression, go to linear. Then I done, uh, okay, let me just uh, go to research. reset. Yes. Let's reset. And come down here to get to uh, the, the dependent variable is procurement flexibility. And then uh, I go down uh, to the independent variable, which is logistic flexibility. Then I go to OK. This is my outcome. And now so, go to stop sharing and then start sharing the output. OK. It's not this screen. What's showing it? OK, then I go to sharing again. Yes, share again. OK. Where are we? Here we go. Click on share screen. That's the screen. Yes. That's the outcome. Yes. So can you interpret that one? What does it do? What does your results mean? Um, I look at the T on coefficient, the T value. Uh, it's all above uh, the constant. No, just and, look uh, at the look at the T for logistic flexibility. Yeah, it's three. It's three point three six one. I think okay. it is slightly. It's not. Uh, it's not way way above, but it's just slightly significant. And also very, look at this is very significant 0 0.01 compared to 0 0.05. No, I mean 3.361. Yeah, it's above two. Normally, we say two. Normally, we would want to say 1.96, but 1.96 okay. is closer to two. So, you normally refer to two. Oh, okay. So, so it's significant. Our T value can confirm that as well as our P value, which is um, 0 .0, 0 0.001, which is below 0 0.05. So it means there is a statistically significant relationship between, between flexibility and, and procurement flexibility. flexibility. Ah, good. So there are various tests which can be done. Now you can say stop sharing. Thank you. So there are various tests which can be done on SPSS. But I think what we now need to do is to say which one should be used for which one. Because you may not know which one to pick. Like when in this case we picked regression, isn't it? But there are certain times when you may need to use uh, ANOVA, you may need to use MANOVA, you may need to use chi square, you may need to use correlation, you may need to use structural equation modeling, and so forth. You may need to use effect analysis and so forth. So you need to know which one to use under what circumstance. Am I clear? Dope, uh, 
Farisai is raising a hand. Yes, Farisai, let's hear you. Okay, Doc, sorry to take you back. Uh, okay. I was just, in, just thinking about the two, the two variables, which is logistic uh, flexibility and procurement flexibility. Which yeah. one is the dependent variable and which one is the, the independent variable? I was thinking that if a logistic flexibility, yeah, it's like a procurement flexibility, flexibility depend on the logistic flexibility. I sent yeah. you corrected. You, you could be very correct. Uh, that depends on the theory which you were hypothesizing that variable, that, that relationship. Okay. So it would okay. be the way you are saying, but in this case, we're just hypothetically using that example to show how it can be analyzed. But now, of course, which one should be dependent variable and which one should be independent will depend on what you have written under your chapter two under which review, depending again on the theory which you used to leverage that relationship on. But in our okay, case, so. we're just using a hypothetical example to say, how can it be analyzed? Thank you, Doc. Ah, good. Now, the question which is here is, when do I use regression analysis? When do I use ANOVA? When do I use chi-square? When do I use correlation? There are so many statistical tools in SPSS. And you may not know which one to use. So we want to assist each other on that angle to say, when the situation is like this, use this statistical tool. Right now, we have used regression analysis, but it didn't help you much because you don't know why we chose regression analysis. Is that so? You just heard me saying, let's go to regression analysis. But why have we gone to regression analysis? No reason was given. The next time I say, let's use sky screen, again, without giving you any reason, you may not get any guidance to use when you are on your own. So now that's what you want to do, to say, you lose regression analysis when the situation is like this. You use ANOVA when the situation is like this. You use sky screen when the situation is like this, so that at least you can make an independent decision on which statistical tool to use when you are testing your hypothesis. So uh, let's have a table. I'm not going to draw a table here. So let me say table. It will have three, three columns. And then I have independent variable here. Independent variable. Yeah, you forgive my slowness. I'm a very slow type. Then dependent variable. Then here statistical too. Right. Let's say uh, our vari our independent variable is categorical. Right. Normally, we have got a categorical variable and a continuous variable, and our dependent variable is continuous. What statistical tool do we use when the situation is like this? But then the question is, what is the categorical variable? What is a continuous variable? Because if I write to say when a, a categorical variable is like this and a continuous variable is like this, use this. Someone will say, okay, you have said that, but what is a categorical variable? What is a continuous variable? So we need, first of all, to enlighten each other on that. Then I think we will be able to proceed without much challenges. So what is a categorical variable? Can someone assist from the group? What is the categorical variable? Uh, can I try, Doc? Yes, try, say. Uh, categorical variable are the variables that uh, uh, are like our 
demographics and the continuous are the variables uh, which uh, uh, are statistically uh, uh, processed like our questions, uh, like our uh, supply, uh, our profit, our procurement, those are continuous variables. Okay, a, a good attempt. So in other words, we we'll say categorical variables. These are the variables that only put individuals into categories without showing the magnitude of how they are different. They are nominal in nature. For example, gender, either in the category of being male or a category of being female. It doesn't mean that the other one is more important than the other one. Or it doesn't mean that the other one has got more value than the other one. It's simply categorizing. So things like gender is categorical variable. Things like race is categorical variable. Tribe is categorical variable. Uh, and so forth. To say you are white or black, yeah, these are just category, categories. So it's a categorical variable like that. Then continuous variables. These are the variables that shows differences in a continuous format, in an increasing or decreasing format, to say something so much, for example, distance, it's continuous to say 10 kilometers, seven kilometers, uh, five kilometers, three kilometers, and so forth. Or even those uh, Latin variables, which we say from strongly agree to strongly disagree, we'll label them one, two, three, four, five, which shows that there are some differences in between. And those ones are continuous variables. So if we've got an independent variable and a dependent variable, the other one being categorical and the other one being continuous, which statistical tool do we use for testing such a relationship? Number one, we can use ANOVA. Right, ANOVA is used when we've got a categorical independent variable and a continuous dependent variable. We can also use T tests. These T tests they could be dependent T tests, independent T tests, paired T tests, and so forth. But they can be used there also. Then we can have a situation where we have got two or more categorical variables. Two or more categorical variables and one continuous. Variable. You forgive my spelling. My typing is not that good. Continuous. Continuous variable. In this case, we can use what you call factorial. Factorial enough. We are all going to do this on SPSS. Uh, then we can have a situation whereby we have one or more uh, let's say two or more mm -hmm. categorical variables. And then two or more continuous variables. We can use MANOVA.
MANOVA stands for Multivariate Analysis of Variance. Continuous spelling here. Mm -hmm. Ah, so what is spelling continuous? What is it? Yeah. Right, so we use MANOVA. And then if we have got a continuous, let's say just say multiple. Continuous variables and multiple continuous variables, dependent variables again, multiple continuous variables again. We can use structural equation modeling. Right. If you have got a categorical variable, which is independent, and, and another one, categorical, which is dependent, we use chi square. Chi square. If we have got continuous and then categorical here under dependent, we use binary logistic regression. Binary logistic regression or Multinomial logistic regression. If you have a continuous and a continuous here, continuous and continuous, continuous and then another continuous this side. We use uh, simple regression. A regression analysis. Right, so these are some of the statistical tools which we use depending on uh, depending on the nature of our variables. So I don't know whether someone is going to person on this one on how to choose a statistical tool. It all depends on the nature of the variables which we have. Is there anyone with a question on this one? On which? Statistical tool to choose for which test? Any person? If there are no questions, Dr. Famba. Hello? Hello, Doc. Right. If there are no questions, can we allow them to, to break so that maybe next time we may need now to, to do the analysis based on when everyone has got SPSS installed in his or her laptop? Was at the moment I think there are only two or three students with the SPSS installed? 
because we would want to test various situations where we would need to test various statistical tools based on real, real life examples. Unless if there are any other persons on what we have already covered. Maybe you can invite them for Yamandi. Yamandi has the a hand up. Okay, let's see if you have a question. Uh, hi, Doc. You can hear me? Yes, yeah. I can hear you clearly. How are you saying? No, I'm okay. I just wanted to ask, like in a situation where you might actually, uh, let's say in your question here, you got different type of uh, variables. So okay. you can use different type of analysis for one, let's say, um, research paper, or they would expect you to use at least one throughout the whole paper. Ah, fine. You can use different types of statistical tools. In, a, in the same paper, it's allowed, it's possible. Depending, okay. depending on the nature of your variables, yes, you can use different. It's very, very much appropriate. Are you answered? Yeah, I'm very answer. Thank you. Right. Any other question? Yes, Kuzwa question. Uh, you said that we should uh, later we should install a more advanced SPSS. I was wondering what you, which SPSS is that? Uh, I didn't say advanced. Anyone who well, I said I said before very much uh, advanced studies, but I think for you guys, whatever you have is still working very well. Okay. Well, there are, certain, there are certain applications which are on you know how do they do in marketing? They just add one or two features and say there's a new version, so that at least you can buy something new. <laughs> Otherwise, you find that even on the old versions, what the old versions can do is still what can be done by new versions, except for very minor adjustments. So I am saying whatever you can get is still fine. Okay. And which one were you using here? It was version 26. Okay. Thank you. Right, any more questions? Was, I was planning that next Saturday, we go thoroughly into this analysis of ANOVA, MANOVA, a, a, a chi-square logistic analysis, and so forth. When everyone is with the data, so that you do just watch how it's done, but you also practice how it's done. Because the SPSS, that analysis is more of a practical, uh course than than uh than just hearing what's how what, what is done it needs hands on so i was planning that maybe you bring your uh spss then we do the real practical thing now that the background we now have it so uh, i hello, might, yes Yes, you, you are right. I'm actually disappointed with uh, uh, my colleagues because I I gave them this in advance. And those who were having challenges were supposed to actually let me know in time. Uh, I What was lost you, Dr. Famba? I think he's experiencing some network challenges. Yeah, I think so.
That's from um, 34 bits, some are uh, on uh, 64 bits. So, so it depends on um, this is where compatibility um, uh, software for this learning. Please let's do so in time. Thank you. Doctor. You can you may proceed. But I thought um, Doc was saying he he wants to reconnect next week, and that he could say yes. You have yes. That's right. That's why I'm saying because if 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 people don't uh, actually acquire the the software, even next you might find that there are some people who still don't. Doc, we are losing you. Hello. Hello. Yeah, we are losing you. So we, we may be making interventions which are out of turn with what you are saying. Um, no, I uh, can you hear me now, Doc? Yes, now I can. Yes, I was talking about uh, the, the need to acquire softwares in time for the lecture. Because uh, as Dr. Mukucha is saying, this is a practical course. So it is not wise to come to this course with no software. I'm just thinking aloud. I'm not sure whether this um, is possible is it possible to do a kind of like what Microsoft does sometimes or some other, you know, to purchase um, a licensed software that can be installed on X number of machines? Because then we could assist um, through a group um, discount arrangement like that. It may be too late for the current stock of students, but we, we could think about that possibility. Because individually, uh, it may be heavy, I'm not sure. Maybe they can afford it, but I'm just thinking aloud, as I said. Uh, Doc, this software experiences in this country, yes, in, in, in Western countries, they need to buy it, but in this country, Ah, they just take it. They know how to get it for free, everyone. There's no one who, who needs to touch with a single cent to get this software. You just do the thing that, uh, that gets They can them. all get it free. <laughs> all of them know. No one should even part with a single cent to get this software. It's okay. freely downloadable. Okay. All right. So what they just need is that during the course of the week, they just need to install it in their laptops and then it will be fine. Otherwise, it's very, very easy to get. It's one of the free available uh, software. Doc Famba. Doc Famba. Yes, uh, maybe. Yes, Doc. Yeah. That, does it mean, um, or is it true that if, if you have your antivirus on your machine, you need to deactivate that first and then um, install the this software, the SPSS, and then only then do you reinstall your antivirus um, software. Yes, especially when you are cracking, because uh, you see the getting PC. Um... I like the way you use cracking. You're avoiding the legal term. <laughs> okay, I hear you. Maybe we shouldn't be talking about this because we're going to be putting these things on YouTube. Okay, offline we will deal with that matter. Um, so, so we could we could then have a, a second slot next week, unless we are um, uh, packed for next week. Uh, otherwise. Yes. We could we could uh, allow Doc to to do maybe the first hour or so, and then get on with the slot for next week with somebody else. Exactly. 
Do you find that agreeable? Doc Famba was lost in the Yeah, his network is a bit of a challenge. Yeah, let me try and phone him. Um, Rosemary, you have your hand up. Can you make a contribution? Uh, I just have a question. I want to ask, is there a certain vision of SPSs that doesn't um support the data that we are given because the version of SPSS that I downloaded is not opening this data. It's saying that SPSS processor is unavailable. Or maybe I failed to download it correctly. But the, the other, all the other processes that we are doing, it was okay. What version, but I cannot open this data. What version do you have? Uh, should be 15. Yeah. Maybe try, try, try around 20. 21. Yeah, 2021 20, from 20 there are about. Okay, I'll try that. Thank if you. you stay, if you stay in Harare, it's easier. There, there, there are guys who can assist there. Um, I will say, if I want to get the guy fast, fast. <laughs> We will we, we, we facilitate offline. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. I think Doc Famba may have difficulties coming back on, um, but as agreed, I think you can take uh, maybe an hour off the next presentation on Saturday. Next Saturday. Yes. yes meanwhile, Saturday, we encourage the course participants to have the fully installed uh software for for that one hour priority work which means i am left with just thanking you um, as the lead presenter today um certainly i've been taking notes as well 